What's good? Happy New Year. The first 2024 episode of the Lucky Underdogs Podcast. Welcome back. Hope y'all are good. It's another another beautiful year, another beautiful tale, another beautiful episode. It's your boy, Devin Butler. And it's your boy, CJ Procise. And the Lucky Underdogs, where we always going to highlight the underdogs on the Irish the guys who don't get the media coverage, the guys who don't get all the playing time, but when they do, they make the most out of the opportunities. And this week we got a great, we got a we got a great topic because we got the bowl game. Nobody, no, you know, all the all the NFL guys, you know, all the older guys opt out. Now it's time for them underdogs to come in and get their shot. And do their thing. Dogs do their thing this week. Do so, their thing. Thing. And so this, right. this shout this, out to them boys. I mean they like the epitome of the underdog so you know that's when you really come to shine and that's when you really kind of set that standard for the next season so you know we had a lot of guys step up um, and it was great to see great to see yeah no most definitely i definitely think it was a great great win a great way to close out 2023 uh we had a lot of a lot of questions with the how the year was starting to wind down uh, I think to see the offense go out there to be clicking on all cylinders, be able to put up 40 points in a bowl game, it's always a good sign. Always a good confidence builder to those guys. They got to go out there and make those catches, make those blocks, yeah. score those touchdowns. Like, they're going to remember that. They're going to remember those feeling, that feeling for next year. Absolutely. And they're going to build on that all off season. So definitely, definitely a good, good, great win for the Irish, I say, great win. Uh, especially given, you know, a lot of the people that was out and a lot of people that played in, in the different positions and dudes that was in the portal and stuff. So definitely a great win. I think them boys definitely got a lot to look forward to for next year. Um, let's see. You got an underdog of the game? You got an underdog uh, of the game? I, I, I mean, I think, I mean, I think, I think, I mean, we've been talking about it all season, like let the guy get his chance. He got his chance to do it and he did his thing. I mean, I mean, obviously Oregon State wasn't the, wasn't a great opponent, you know. You obviously could tell they kind of they kind of gave up. They had their guys out too. They had their guys yeah. that were sitting out there yeah. too. But so I think you got to give a lot of credit to you know our team because, I mean, yeah, we playing in the Sun Bowl in El Paso. Like nobody cares about it, you know. We might it'd be probably you know got Notre Dame fans there, but that game probably wasn't packed to the brim. You know, it wasn't like a. Mm-hmm. You know, that's a game that you got to get yourself up for. Like it ain't gonna be. A crowd, the crowd gonna be what live. It's gonna be just a regular game. So, um, for us to go out there and you know play that way, put you know put some points up on the board, you know stop them, don't let them really you know only limit them to what one one score. So mm-hmm. that, that's man, that that that's, that puts a lot of pride into our team. That says that like our team has a lot of pride, has a lot of resolve, and, and I mean that's that's what you look forward to going to next season. But you know, and Jelly man, I think he's definitely the underdog, um, in my yeah. opinion. Um, you know, I know Faison, you know, Faison got the MVP, but uh, mm-hmm. the way that Jelly played that game, I think he definitely put himself in position to say, hey, I can compete for this spot next year. You know, it might not be, you know, you know, we, we all know it might it might go to it's probably gonna end up going to Leonard. But I think just the way the way he played, the way he managed that game, the way he, you know, he didn't turn the ball over. He uh, he, he, he did a great job managing the game when he he ran the ball when he needed to run, got first downs. You seen him run the dude over? You seen him run by the over? I'm like, okay, got some likes. He told me got some to him. I'm like, I like that. I like that kind of stuff. He really really put it on the line, and I think he he deserves a shot. So, I mean, you can't just say, you know, Leonard's a starter. Like, I would really be disappointed if the first, you know, three practices in the spring game, you know, spring ball, we're like, oh, Riley Leonard's a starter. Like, like we should, you know, I don't think that should be announced until at least after the spring game. I think they should be able to fight out, you know, battle out that spot and he should get a fair, you know, a fair shake. So um, that's For my sure. I mean, I think he better be getting those first team reps. I mean, he knows the offense. So like he yeah. should, he really has a leg up on the competition, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you coming into playing quarterback in a whole different system, especially after he just showed how he runs this system and how the system looks with him at the helm. At the helm. So, you know, I definitely think he might have, he definitely put himself in a great, position for people to to see that this is going to be a battle yeah. and this is, it isn't just Riley Leonard's job to lose it's uh it's a battle you know they both have an opportunity for that 
Because I think I think he's definitely got he's got the stuff that can win games at Notre Dame for sure. And you know he's a guy that's got uh, he's got a couple years of eligibility left. So I definitely think this is you know it's something to letting him get some experience now, yeah. so that once later comes, he can be one of those reliable quarterbacks that you can depend on. One of those experienced guys. Yeah, and I think it's I mean I think it's really important how we kind of handle that 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 quarterback competition. You know, because it's going to be yeah. It's going to be a lot of competition throughout the whole kind of offense um, going into this next season. Especially, I mean, especially you know, we, we it's going to be a lot of new guys. Um, you know, a lot of the receivers that we got now, they're going to be competing for for them them, them spots because um, we got some guys oh, that yeah. pretty good. And so um, right now it's like you know, kind of up, it's a lot of the spots on offense, a lot of kind of up in the air, other than really running back and uh, you know yeah. line spots, but. Other than that, you know, it's going to be a lot of co- competition on that offense. So I think that the way we handle that is going to be really important just as far as everything, how everything else kind of falls into place. Mm-hmm. No, I, I agree. I agree with that for sure. What did uh, you think about the play calling of the game? What did you think? Um, I think, think it was solid. Um, you know, I think we got the ball to the guys who, you know, who we, we thought were going to make plays, you know, threw the ball to Jaden Thomas early, got the ball to Faison. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, got got them, got them boys going. Um, let them make plays, and and then went kind of went from there. Uh, you know, get let the running backs, you know, uh, do their thing. Um, Jeremiah Love, he looks, he looks explosive. Yeah. He looks different. He made <laughs> a ballerina move and it scored, which is that was crazy. <laughs> yeah, one. that Jay was definitely one nuts. One leg yeah. on the tippy toe and then went score. So man, yeah, we we definitely got some uh, some guys guys on the um on the offense. Uh, I mean defensively, man, like I. I think you know we don't really talk about it a lot because it's like we don't really have to because they always getting the job done, um, mm-hmm. and I think that's going to continue to happen. Uh, just even with you know Watts coming back and you know just yeah, kind of big time that the, that base of that defense coming back is going to be good for us. Um, so yeah, man. I mean, I think the play calling as far as offense it, it was good. You know, we'll you know obviously you know going forward we'll, we'll probably see a little bit different, a little definitely some changes. Um, but yeah, man, I think. Um, Overall, it was a good good game, and so, I mean, you know, just watching it, you know, it's it's it's, it's, it's tough. It was what it was. It was what you wanted to see out of yeah, exactly out of Notre Dame yeah. with Sumbo. You wanted to see a dominant win versus an opponent that should not be on the same caliber as Notre Dame. Like that's yeah. just no shade the the Oregon State, but that's just the 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 facts of it. We not seeing y'all as our as our competition. Right. We, exactly. we want to be competing with them with those names that was just playing yesterday. Yeah, like those are the those are the boys that we have the intention and ambition of competing against. You yeah. know, speaking of those games, uh, speaking of those New Year's games, that college football playoffs was nuts. Was but tough. before we get to that, though, I do want to get your opinion on this. So I did a little bit of. I felt like I should work for ESPN with how I came up with this little stat. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? So there's 39 bowl games this season, right? Out of the 39 uh, FBS joints, you know, not the not the FCS ones, but the, the FBS ones outside of the college football playoffs. Out of the 39, 13 of those games was decided by 17 or more points. So that's one third of the bowl games this year were blowouts, non-competitive games. One out of every three games was non-competitive. That's as a fan. That's not what you want to see. Like, yeah. I don't want to be seeing a non-competitive game every other game. But I mean, I can understand that's kind of is that is that a symptom of where we are in the in the game now with the portal and with dudes sitting out, or do you think that's the committee has to, or the, the the committee has to do a better job of coming up with better matchups because there ain't no reason why Liberty should have been playing Oregon in that fiesta. Yeah. Right? I mean, no, I mean it's like um, it's definitely. I mean, as far as that 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 game, and you know, I mean, I know they're undefeated and stuff, but that I mean that that was definitely an obvious mismatch. Um, but I mean, you know, as far as like the opting out stuff and you know the transfer portal, um. I think I saw somebody say it today, like, I think just during the season, it, it just can't be a transfer portal, like, like at the end of the, it has to be like after everything's over, you know, because when yeah. you got guys who are transferring, co- you know, and I know the coaches can leave and stuff like that, but, you know, I just feel like, you know, it, it's 
especially the bowl games, it takes in such a hit. Like, and because I mean, you're getting some of these teams who probably, I mean, they're probably playing with like walk ons. Like, some of them probably out there playing with like walk ons, like just, yeah. They don't have anybody, people like transferring out, people opting out. Um, and I mean, obviously, if you got to, if, if you're like going to the NFL and stuff, I understand that one. Like, you got to do what's best for you. But, you know, with the transfer portal stuff, um, it takes yeah. so much, like it takes so much away because it's like, oh, if I'm, you know, I get to the end of the season, I'm not playing. I'm going to transfer out of here now. You know, now the team is down one person and you could have, you might have gotten that game and played and did your thing. And now you, could have gone going to next year and you could be competing for a starting spot. So it's like it you it it, it, it kind of feels like a lot of a lot of a lot's being taken away from the game. Um yeah. just as far as the competition side of it, it's like now if you don't want to it's basically like it's it's basically like, you know, if you don't want to fight, it's like going to a, a fighting match. Like if you don't want to fight somebody, you'd be like, I don't want to fight him. I'm just gonna wait till later. Like I'm just gonna go fight yeah. somebody basically until if I don't want if I can if I don't think I can match up with him, I'm just gonna go somewhere else. Like that's kind of what it was feeling like. I don't want to, you know. I mean, I know it's, that's not the case, but you know, it's, it's other right. things behind it. But it's like, man, it's taking so much away from the game because now we got all these blowouts and half of the games aren't even competitive. Because that Oregon versus Liberty game, like, yeah, the first like quarter was like, all right, it started looking competitive. Liberty's doing a little bit, but it started like, wearing them boys down though. Like it wasn't after the second. Quarter, like, it's four quarters. It's four quarters to the game. Yeah. So. But yeah, I definitely think it's uh, it's something to be said, you know, with the plethora of just things that the the committee has to take into account. Uh, I think it's you made a great point. I don't know if it was your point or you said you heard it from somebody else, but delaying that portal period until after the bowl season, I think, is definitely something that they should look into. Mm-hmm. Uh, Cause yeah, that affects too many. It affected too many of the games this year. Like it was too many teams that was half loaded, that was just out there limping around on the on the field. Like, and that's not what you want to see in the postseason. That's not what anybody came to see. Like, I'm sure. So, yeah, yeah. And then, but moving on from those, because those those the ball games. There was some good games. I mean that. That Oklahoma game was that Oklahoma Arizona game was great. It was mm-hmm. a hell of a game. Uh, that Missouri Ohio State game was low scoring, but that was a hell of a game too. Though. Yeah, like, it was a good game. Man. So, so it was definitely some good matchups. But I think the committee really, really did their thing when they came up with the playoffs, yo. Know, because they have two playoff games. They have the semifinal games. Both of them come down to the very last play. Last play. Boy, that's like Man, that was, that's tough. That was a hell of a football day, right there. Though. Yeah, I was, I was, I was locked in all day, bro. I got all day locked, locked in. in. Like I, I came home, I'm like, yo, this game close. Like, cause I, I got home, I think I didn't watch the first half of the Michigan Alabama game, but the whole second half, I was locked in. I was like, yo, this game mm-hmm. close. But I got home in half. I was like, oh, yeah, we might have a game here. And then, yeah, man, that, the ending to that game, I was like, yeah, this is a uh, very deserving. Um, oh, yeah. Very deserving for Michigan. Um, like, Man, muck fish again, bro. Listen, they got <laughs> lucky. They they, got- do, they threw a pick on the very first play of the game, bro. Like, threw a pick on the first play of the game. They called dude out. His heel was like hovering above the grass. But I get it. It was it wasn't close enough to overturn. Yeah. But like, yeah, that was they were shook early. Like, they if if Bama was able to capitalize early, oh, they could have they could have yeah. sealed that game, man. And, uh, Bama, Bama just ain't got the. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, I'm not. I haven't really watched Jalen Milrow a lot. Um, you know, I don't. I just don't feel like it didn't look like Tommy really had the confidence to let Jalen Milrow to just let it like let it go. Like it was, yeah. and maybe he just didn't have it have it on that day. You know, it looked like they were just trying to do, do a lot of QB runs with him. So, I mean, they was they was going with what was working. Uh, he was definitely under duress. Like, he was under duress every time he dropped back. Like, I think in the first half or in the first quarter, he dropped back six times and was sacked four times. Yeah. So, like, and he was back there. Yeah, nothing, bro. They, <laughs> that old line was getting dominated, boy. Like, yeah. super dominated. Uh, and, yeah, I mean, he was he he was having to make a way on it with his legs. And I think it's unfortunate that he's so good of a runner and when he's forced to run, it looks so dynamic. 
And yeah. People people forget that he does have a, a real strong arm. He's got a flex like can, wrist kind of arm. Like he can really throw yeah. the ball. Like he can sling it. I can't. I, I don't. I don't think he's quite like a. I, mean, I think he's definitely got a stronger arm than like Jalen Hurts. You know what I'm saying? I think mm-hmm. he's got more of a natural zip to the ball than than some of those guys. But he's not like you know super talented at the quarterback position like Pat Mahomes or or Lamar right. Jackson or something like that. But he could definitely throw the ball, and I think he can be developed. I think yeah, he can no. definitely be better than – I mean, I think he definitely is a little more dynamic than Justin Fields. Like, I think mm-hmm. he's more dynamic than that, you know. No, he's he's a hell of a quarterback. And, you know, yeah. I think just, um, you know – and it, it's tough. Like, you know, Michigan defense played a hell of a game. Like, they were hell of a game, they were, they were after him. Um, I mean, but that final call, man, it was like uh, – and, and I guess, you know, for him it was like, you know, he's got, he got a low snap. It's tough. He's probably just trying. He just probably just trying to get you know, trying to make something out of nothing. They didn't really block it well. Um, nothing, bro. So Dude's didn't, getting didn't pressed really, in his lap, bro. It was bad, bro. Yeah, he, it didn't really execute at all. So it's like, I mean, you can't really, can't really blame. You know, I mean, you can blame the play call. I mean, it wasn't the probably the greatest call in the world. But I mean, I think if he got a good snap, you know, I, we might could have seen something different. But we might have seen something uh, different. I don't know. Them boys was back there, dog. They them was back there. Back there. I, don't, I don't know if he would have. If I, they said they said it was an RPO, so I don't know if he could have threw it. Had a, you know, had yeah, a shot to throw Had it. a little bit of time. Yeah. I mean, Michigan, hats off to Michigan, though, because, I mean, they made a lot of mistakes that could have easily lost in the game. So, uh, But, you know, without those mistakes, they could have easily won by – 14, 17 yeah. points, you know, you, they left four points on the on the scoreboard early. Oh yeah. yeah. With a miss field with yeah, a miss field yeah. goal, miss extra miss extra, extra point, point, muff snap on the field goal. Like it was all bad. Then they dropping punts. And honestly, I ain't gonna lie, that that last punt when uh when whoever that dude was that they threw in the game, they catch the punt at the end of the game, switched the returns up for that oh, last yeah. joint. Almost yeah, got I mean, a safety, bro. I'm like, hey, yo. yo he was would like, have never been able to return to the state of Michigan after that. Like, hey, he would it was have like, been man, able to get back to Michigan, bro. You usually, you usually can't make that many mistakes against Bama and then, then say you can, then say you won. Like, they say you even had a close game with them, let alone say you won. Like, won. So I would definitely say, you know, they had, they played a great game, defense played a great game. But they had uh, Lady Luck was on their side last night for too. So. Sure, <laughs> good. For he sure. almost got us. When he almost got the safety, I was like, "Yo, I'm like, oh, this game over." I was like, "Oh, this game over." I was hey. like, "I was, I had, I, I was know like, his Yo, heart idiotic." Like that's the most Michigan I could have seen. I'm like, that's just I dumb. Know. I know his heart was beating out of his chest, like yo, I like <laughs> he, was, yeah. he, he probably couldn't he probably couldn't even sleep like man, I almost lost his day. Bro, I can't I can't believe like Yeah, bro, I don't I don't even know why they even switched up the returners like that for the very last part return of the game. Like why would you yeah, even do that? Take a dude out of his whole groove, bro. Like, like, like nah, that's, no that's messed up. That's that's messed up to put him back there like that. Like Like that's <laughs> yeah, like that's definitely messed up because now everybody's looking at him, but he like, bro, I ain't caught a punt, a live punt. Bro, I might have since dude, October or something. Boy, like, that's dude, crazy. Low key, me, I would probably just let it go. I wouldn't even try to catch it. No, he <laughs> definitely should have let it go, bro. Your, your, it, heels, it was like a, your heels are at the eight, and if you got to back up, don't catch that you ball. Gotta, like, yeah, I don't even return rude. punts, and I know that, bro. Like, that's rule number one. <laughs> yeah, more slim. Like. Heels at the eight. Listen, you, I would have seen that. I would have seen the joint. All right, I'm good. Not a fair catch. Right, fair away, caught that joint and ran the other right, way. Right, like, all listen, over this way. Fool, I'm not tripping. even getting close to the ball. Like, tripping, yeah. bro. Because, yeah, they needed that touchback. They didn't need him to field it at the sixth. They, they needed, needed that touchback. Like, they, honestly, they need him to touch the ball at all. He, they, even, at if all he, even, even if they downed it at the three, it would have been better than what he did. Like, man. it's Cause yeah, that was that was a dangerous that was a dangerous dangerous one. It almost ended real bad for him. And uh, yeah. I mean, I think that they, you know, they got a, a. Well, let's talk. Let's talk about the Texas uh, the Texas Washington game first. Oh, yeah. uh, I definitely want to issue uh, a public statement saying that uh, I was wrong about who deserved the Heisman Trophy. Uh, yes. I said it was Jaden Daniels, but. Uh, Hey. All records are showing that Michael Penix is definitely the MVP of the college football season. Like, yeah, Shorty is built different, executed like everything. Could made every throw that he wanted to on the field. It looked 
calm as hell doing it. Like, it's yeah, one thing to make any throw, but you might have a couple of plays where you look a little jittery like you're forcing it. I didn't see not one play like that, bro. Like, dude, it was, was cool. Just- Mm. And even even when he had some pressure on him, like he had some pressure on him, um, so he'd step out the way, throw it easy. I was like, yeah, he cold, and his receivers are cold. They oh. they gonna, his receivers like they kept, they were catching everything. He was throwing it, he was throwing it up, and they were just going to get it. I was like, oh yeah, they, like these boys is yeah, these boys ready. Like they not they trying to win. They not they they not some slouches out there. They got some they got some dogs out. Um, but hats out off to Texas though, cause Texas. Like like Michigan made a lot of mistakes. Mm-hmm. Two fumbles in the third quarter. They basically ran like seven total plays in the whole third quarter. You know what I mean? They made some some dumb dumb penalties. Like I think they had like twelve penalties or some crazy number like that. Mm-hmm. And they mm-hmm. still had, they still was right there to win the game. Like they still had multiple shots to win the game. Yeah. So I think well, that, it, I think they didn't that, have Lady Luck on their side. Yeah, Michigan well, I think, did. Yeah, I think Texas Washington did. just had that. It, it watched him muff that. Watched him muff that punt early in the game, and it just kept the game like close yeah, the whole yeah. time. Like because they were able to just, answer. True. Yeah, well, I think Georgia could have won either one of those games against. Yeah, for sure. Any of those four teams, they could have won. Yeah, they could have yeah. did those four teams. Uh, but um, the last thing that I will say about the the, the Texas Washington game though is uh, you could definitely tell that Washington is a very well-coached football team, very well-coached, very disciplined, and that made all the difference, in my opinion. Uh, Twelve penalties, uh, the fumbles, stuff like that, I I think those kind of are symptoms of coaching. Mm -hmm. Uh, Whether you want to say that's a lack of discipline on the players' part, well, then that's on the coaches for not enforcing and instilling the discipline in the players. It's right. not just the players, you know what I mean? So definitely think that. And um, But as we're talking about this Natty, though, man, I do think that Michigan has got more confidence coming out of the semifinals. I think beating Bama and the way that they won, coming back late, even having, them, having those mistakes and probably going to film and seeing that, oh, we left about 17 points on the board, you know what I mean? Right. I think they got more confidence coming into this game. But as I was watching Washington, bro, they just play the game so calm and confident. Like, it's tough for me to see them being any type of rattled. Like, they, it doesn't look like the stage is too big for anybody on that team, bro. Like, they all just seem like, they, like they're like super bought into that coach. And it's – a hell of a thing to see, bro. Like it's a hell, that's a hell of a football team, bro. Yeah, I think um I think you know, I think the the matchup as far as, you know, Michigan's run game, um, and then, you know, Washington's obviously, you know, pass game, um, that's gonna be the big uh the big kind of matchup, uh, because the way the <laughs> the way Washington moved that ball through the air, man, they they dangerous. Um they're tough. And you know, obviously Michigan gonna run it run the ball. Um. So you know that that obviously that that Washington versus Michigan, because I think you know, Washington they can put points on the board quick, um, quick fast, and they they win close games. They they really good at winning close games. Um, they won. I think they, they said the last they last they won. They last like five games by like a total of like ten points. Like so, they um they 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 edging them out right now. And they, I mean, in Michigan, like you know. To me, they just they not they 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 gonna have to make a lot of big plays. They gonna have to make more big plays. Um, yeah. And I think they'll they'll have that chance against Washington defense. They're not, they're not like you know crazy. Uh, you know, not the you know. They're not Bama's defense. They're not Bama's defense for sure. Like they're not them boys that they just went up against. Like exactly. So they ain't them. Sure, I think you know Washington's gonna put up some points, and I think Michigan gonna definitely put up. Uh, I'm gonna have to put up some points to keep up with them. So it's gonna be a fun game, man. It's gonna be a fun. I don't. I can, honestly, I don't even know who I would. I go on the record and say it. I'm gonna say it now. Congrats to Michael Penix and the Washington Huskies because I think they're about to win that Natty, bro. I think this is the year. I think the writing's on the wall for them. I think that they have the more disciplined team. I think they have a team that's a little. I mean, I think they're bought in level to their coaches on the teams is about equal. Like both of those teams real prideful and their coaches, they're real bought into what their coaches got. And 
you know, so I think it could go either way, but I, I think that, uh, yeah, I think the Muskies is pulling this one out. I think, like you said, they, uh, they're going to move that ball, bro. They're going to score those points. And that's the name of the game is getting the ball in the end zone, bro. And yeah. they, they, they're going to do that. Like, uh, it's going to be tough to stop them from doing that. And I think their defense does a good enough job of bending, but not breaking. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. But, you know, I can't. I hate to say it, but you know, I guess I'm gonna have to say muck, 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 muck fish again with this one. You know, uh, uh, it's always muck fish again, bro. Muck always. fish again, muck fish again. But no, nah, I, I think I, I definitely, I think, man, I think Michigan gonna pull it out, man. Um, I think you know, a Harbaugh, you know, all that adversity they had to deal with with Harbaugh, and now you know he gonna probably end up leaving after this season. Um, Damn, I think, um, yeah, that'd I think be that, crazy. Um, I think, I, mean, I mean, I think he has to leave after the season. I feel like yeah. they probably, they probably, probably yeah. gonna bring the, bring the hammer down on him after the, you know next especially year. Especially so. you, especially you win that natty, like yeah, champ, yeah, yeah. You, and you yeah, finessed it. Say so if you want <laughs> this to count, blood, you gonna have to. Y'all was stealing signs, stealing hand signs, and you was illegally recruiting. Like yeah, bro, if you want this national championship to stand, you are gonna have to get the hell up out of this NCAA next year, bro. Yeah, basically straight so. up. So yeah, I, that's how I think. That's how I feel like it's gonna go. We'll see how it goes, man. Um, it's gonna be a good game, though. I think you know it's definitely not gonna be a repeat of last year. Yeah. Um, cheer, man. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, man. That's uh, that, All that's right, it. Well, that's yeah. it. That's my that's my prediction. All right. Well, y'all heard it here, man. We got. I'm going for Washington. CJ crazily just said on camera that Michigan is going to win the national championship. That's crazy. I don't know. Y'all do with that as y'all want. I, I thought that was a little crazy, but hey. It is what it is. It's 2024. Who knows what's going to happen, man. And who knows, man. Who knows. But what Boys going to lose. The them Cowboys is going to lose. We ain't worried about that. Hit. We ain't worried about I'm going to put that, that on record listen. right now. Man, I want everybody listen. here. Listen. I want everybody here. As long as we ain't going to San Fran, I'm putting money on whoever. I'm putting money on whatever. Just like, until we got to go in to San Fran, I'm, all my money is on the line, bro. Like, I, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. how I'm feeling. Yeah. The boys is out of there. What was it the second or the third week in January? That that's when the playoffs start. The second week in January. It's all right. You gonna weekend. see us? You gonna see? We gonna the see? We gonna see? They gonna, they gonna be? They gonna be? Uh, they gonna be in Cancun for divisional round? They gonna be in the Cancun for divisional round? <laughs> oh man, I hope to God not, bro. I'm gonna cry. I'm gonna cry, bro. It's been too many. It's been. This don't do me like that, CJ. It's not the year. All right, it's, it's this it's might be our year, bro. It just might be. It just might be. It just might. Once it's the Cowboys always. aren't front runners, that might be their year. Whenever they're not front runners, they, they might be their year. Don't nobody think we finna win nothing. They don't never, we ain't never <laughs> been no front runners, bro. They ain't never made nobody been thinking that we was going to win. Maybe a couple what? years with Romo. A couple years with Romo, people was like Romo, nervous. The band, that, that one year with Tac, though, yeah, people was definitely nervous. Bro, if, the, if the Cowboys get three wins in a row, they think they're going to win the Super Bowl. I mean, Dez caught it, bro. So don't get me started, bro. Like, don't get me started. <laughs> Dez did catch it, though. Don't Dez did catch it, bro. Like, that was just. That, 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 that was messed up. But let's that, sign that, off that, before you get me real emotional on here, bro. <laughs> it's 2024. We're supposed to start off on a good note, all right? Don't yeah, do me like that, bro. I got chaos going on back there anyway. Oh, uh, yeah. Daddy yeah, Duty's no, call, man. Here. Papa Duty's call, man. So we signing off. The Lucky Underdogs, as always, brought to you by the good people at Believe Network. Brought to you by Goodman Productions, Valley Sports in Ohio. Appreciate y'all for tapping in as always. Happy New Year and peace. Peace out.